G'day and welcome to the Infronters. I'm Execute. Today I'm joined by Osiris Frost and Algrid. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Enjoying the shit show, the dumpster fire, the satellite from orbit. Um, this patch has been a bit rocky to say the least. Um, I can't get in game. These two boys are able to get in the game. But because I do the recording, um, we're just going to do it through the browser today. Um, so I'll, flip, I'll switch straight over to the browser. And we'll uh, we'll go from there. All right. So um, first day, Origin, RSI, and Tumbrel. Um, what's your guys' initial impressions straight off the bat of the sale overall? Algar, do you want to go first? <laughs> um, my first impressions are I'm looking at them. Um, I haven't really checked out the sale mainly because I generally have everything in terms of the origin vehicle. Mm. Uh, the only one I think is worthwhile is the G12 of the one with the, the earth. So kind of knockoff. Yeah. And for me, it loses its value because it's actually wider than an Ursa. So yeah, you don't get a standardized carriageway and that's, that's insane. You've got all these vehicles and every vehicle, like every ship, <laughs> Oh, different whip, different standard. That, <sighs> Makes you wonder if it's deliberately been done, doesn't it? Oh, it, it, I think it has. It's been done so you can't use it with, a, say, an RSI ship or you can't use, you know. But it's frustrating because everything's different. So, oh, mm. hang, you know, ships are hangers. We've got different size ships. And, oh, this ship is a carrier, but it can't take this ship. Or this is a ship that takes jump um, drop ships and it can't can only take this version. Mm. No um, one would make ships like that. I do find this is actually a really good example to explain why I don't like vehicles. Um, you've got this is all in Australian dollars, so I need people to understand that. So we have to pay an extra ten percent GST. So if you're wondering why they're a little bit overpriced, that let is me why. get my calculator. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So basically, it's an extra five. It's an extra ten percent. So these are all fifty-five dollars. This is sixty, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the thing I want to show is this is a whole ship for seventy-seven dollars. This is a whole ship for sixty dollars. These are vehicles. For almost the same price. That is ridiculous. And that is insane. Do not buy vehicles. And when you look, when you look at the, the two vehicles, the two spaceships there, you've got the 325A, which is a fighter, in mm -hmm. the 300 version of a fighter. And the bottom one is the 100 version, which we don't even have yet in game. Yeah. And, that's a, and that's a fighter as well. That's a little fighter. It's. I, I actually think the 100 series are, are crap. They're, they're yep. so useless and small. They're, I in many ways, they're even worse than a, an Aurora and a Mustang. The crazy thing is you can get the 300i for the same price. Even yeah, the base speaking, 300i beats this one. Speaking and, of the starter ships, it's worth mentioning that um, they put up an Avenger Titan uh, game package that a slight discount, and it comes with the Renegade skin mm -hmm. as an add-on, which is kind of cool, I think. That's probably worthwhile. Um, yeah, and yeah. It, good in terms of in terms of the vehicle costs, it, it's just insane. Um, and I know you're getting hit with the um, uh, the origin tax for being rich, but yeah, I do find this kind of laughable. Like literally twenty five dollars for a bunch of t shirts, like that's and and hand hats, but yeah, but that's ridiculous. Because, like, fundamentally, if you know anything about how these are made, they're the same T-shirt with a different texture So you and the same hat with a different texture. So you're literally paying for someone to do a very basic Photoshop job. Um, yeah, there's a few other things in this that has uh, been annoying me as well. Some new merch, but I'm not really interested in that. I don't know about if you guys want to talk about that, but I guess... Uh, we'll... I don't know. The merch is interesting, but I'm kind of... always interesting. I'm kind of hanging on to see something a little bit better than a UE Navy shirt. That's just not my personal thing. No, I did. I just did notice they've got a sticker set. Mm. What so, do you guys think about the ship selections that they have? Uh, in what regard? Sorry, is in the ships well, they put up for sale? Right. My my understanding, and I'm I'm far from an expert on the lore, but I thought that this was supposed to be like uh, the military ships for sale, and then. Yep. I don't know. Which would explain I, I didn't think that the constellation in the Aurora were military ships. So, like the the choices that they've put up for sale have 
kind well, of confuse me. Well, the ones from Origins are both their combat. So you got the 125A, which is meant to be the combat version of the 100 series, and the 325A. But going back down to RSI, like what you were the, saying, the Aurora is the Legionnaire which LN, is their combat version. Yep, which is their kind of upgraded okay. version. The Phoenix is probably just probably the most gunned of the Phoenix. Andromeda's uh, standard. Supposedly, the Phoenix Aquilas. is the best. But those aren't vessels that are employed by the UE Navy, are they? Um, they I don't know. Been. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know in that regard. They've, they've, certainly, yeah. they've certainly said they've used the Taurus as a, a transport ship. The Aquila okay. would be a, a science vessel they've used. Um, at one point, the Andromeda used to be seen in our early gameplay and early lore as being a gunship, best larger ship that could dogfight. Dog it's now the smaller ship that can't do anything. So well, as you Polaris can see, definitely a military ship and that thing sold out in like a couple yeah, seconds. Yeah, it sold out super quick. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of disappointed people. And the other thing that kind of annoys me is, again, they didn't do waves of this. So literally they're gone. Like, so for the, the American to the next it in the morning. Yeah. Um, they need to do like these really popular things. Even if they only do a hundred, they need to break them into three waves, uh, four waves of 25. Well, um, in fairness, they might, but they usually are really bad about announcing it until after the second wave. Yeah. And then they say, oh yeah, we did a second wave and maybe we'll do a third one or whatever. And then by that time yeah. you've missed most of your opportunities. So yeah, they, they need to do a better job of planning these things in advance and communicating their intentions. Yeah, and they do actually have the Medivac vac up for sale as well. So both versions of the Apollo are up as well. Um, that was the one thing I bought medivac, today was the CCU to the Medivac. And yep. the Medivac was that limited edition one, so that was the harder one to get. Yeah. Now, this is something that I am very... I don't know how to word this. I, I think this is really expensive for what they are. Um, they also have tailored them to the price of the ships. So something like an Aurora skin, I actually find that reasonable at $3. Yeah, that's, that looks, that right. looks reasonable. Oh, yeah, but then as soon as you go to a ship that's bigger, like the Constellation, um, this one skin is, that'll be a roughly roughly $10 in, in normal American dollars, so to speak. But that is, like, that is really expensive and it's just blue and gold. It's If it's, you notice, they're... They're discounted currently, correct? So you would assume that after this event, they're going to go up in price by a, a dollar or two? Um, I don't know. I didn't know they were discounted. I thought that or was just that... a standard price. I'm Man, if that thing's going to be in game, I'll earn it in game. I'm not even I guess I looked at it on it. the extras tab. Maybe I was looking at a different view than you. Um, extras are just things up. like, I think extras, paints and extras is just, hat. the other thing that's under extras is just hats and stuff. So, uh, yeah. No, if you click on the at the top bar, it's not really important, but you can get to the paints thing uh, separately from the page you're looking at oh, by okay. clicking down the extras. It'll be a drop down menu. Right. And yeah, OK, I'll have a look at that later. But if that means they're going to go up, that's even worse. Um, I'm not a big fan of the paints, to be honest. Like there's not none of those paints grab me. Um, and also, I wouldn't be recommending people buy paints for something like an Aurora, because let's be honest, most people are going to be getting onto another bigger ship better and sooner constellations a better thing but again it, it it's it, you'll be able to get this blue in game the only advantage you're really getting is that you've got some kind of little slight highlight and this green you've got to get that in game why why would you yeah just i, I don't understand like that that you, you you'd want to green though what I'm, no no i'm talking about just a, a general plain colors you'd be able to get in game so why would you buy it for literal eight dollars when you can get it for free and earn it for free in game? I, I like if they were selling this as I said for three dollars, I could understand people picking that up for convenience, but it's not convenient at that price. Well, um, I think that what they said on a recent, I think it was calling, uh, not calling all devs, or maybe it was, or maybe it was Star Citizen Live. I think they said that the the proprietary skins are not going to be something that you can correct. you apply by the paint system that they give you. Yeah. So there is a little bit of... So of the one out of these two, the proprietary one is probably this Invictus Blue and Gold, but this is yeah. just a normal standard flat green. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so what I'm talking about, so what you're talking about is like the example they gave was the Liberator skin for the Valkyrie. And I'm, I can think of a whole bunch of them, like the Nox, the X1. There's a whole bunch, uh, like the Heartseeker skin for the, the, the Hornet and stuff like that. But it's not going to stop you painting your ship a certain plain color. You just won't have some other added effects. Um, like the example they gave of the Nox is you'll be able to paint your Nox silver, but you won't get the decals that come with that. So Right, yep. Yeah, um, I don't have any problem with the cosmetic upgrades. I think that they're probably not worth the money for myself, but I, I think that that's probably a good way for CIG to keep raising money. Uh, a lot of people are really into cosmetic upgrades like that. Yeah, I usually am, but they just seem overpriced. That's that's my gut feeling. It's just twelve bucks for a constellation skin, and my problem with a constellation is a constellation sucks it is an absolute piece of crap it's i cannot in any good conscience recommend anyone buy buy a constellation whether it's a phoenix taurus aquila they just the, confirmed the today that there's not going to be a rework either yep oh i always you know i hoped there'd be a, a fix but based on what john crew had said previously about retaliator i always assume there wouldn't be uh, mm. Certainly not a major rework. I could see them doing minor things like maybe fixing up a neck or the head, or but they weren't. But I couldn't see them doing the major. Let's redesign the whole ship. I do find yeah. it a little strange though because they he talked specifically about how weird it was having the landing gear and stuff. And as soon as he mentioned that landing gear stuff, I went straight to the constellation. I'm like, well, then they've got to fix that ship because that thing lands in a really weird way. How can you have a mm -hmm. ship that only lands on two arms right at the back? It, it, it just makes no sense to me, but yeah. So for me, the, the Constellation's got major, major problems. Its turrets suck. The position of the turrets suck. They've still got issues with the docking mechanism for the, the their, um, P-52 and P-72. And they did address that in the, in the show today as well. But there's just so many issues with the constellation and the fact they turned it into a large ship which made it fly like a large ship and it's still got medium components it's just it's it's not worth having it's not worth spending your money on it and i, I can't encourage anyone to get it yeah. and the fact it, that they're they're announcing that they're giving up on on modernizing it kind of indicates that maybe um for the most part we can't count on there being another pass on flight ready yeah. ships that don't quite make sense or have weird things about them that we wish they would fix. I mean, they said they would look at the 600 I, but we've kind of been operating under the assumption that they were definitely going to go back and fix the Connie. Cause of course they had to. And now they're, I think they're just triaging their resources at this point and well, saying it doesn't make any sense. I think part of the reason for not doing the Connie or the ships that are, you know, ready, it's exactly the same argument and same with the 600 I. It's exactly the same argument that John Crew used with the Retaliator. It's in game, it works. Hmm. Therefore, we're not going to do it. All right, well, uh, we'll have to wait and see how that turns out then. Um, moving on to Tumbrel. Um, I'm pretty much in the same boat as I was with Origin up the top there. Um, more vehicles, don't recommend them. Uh, well, is there anything you guys want to say about Tumbrel? Yeah, they're more expensive than the Origin ships. Mm. The, the yeah. Origin Rover, there you go. I had things to say about the Tumbrel Cyclones versus the Origin Rover, but I'll leave that for the buyer's guide, yeah. I guess. Yeah, same here for me. I'm deliberately biting my tongue on that one. Um, we will have a buyer's guide out for that. Uh, probably might even record it straight after this. Um, yeah, so kind of a little bit of an uneventful day for me. Um, I don't know if you gents feel the same. Um, yeah, I do. But, um, yeah, hopefully they get it fixed uh, for not tomorrow, but the next day with... Um, Who's next? I can't actually remember who's next. Uh, I think it's um, Anvil is the next sale, which will be on the uh, 24th of May. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we've got it running smoother by then. Yes, fingers crossed for that. Yeah, I'm hoping for for a little more excitement out of Anvil than we got today. Yeah. Um, it is nice to kind of... Well, it will be nice to see the... Um, G12 when they get that in game I, 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 it's probably the most interesting thing I've ever enjoyed from Origin and um, I'm not a big Origin fan as you guys all know but um, I do well 
I'll leave it for the bias guide. We'll put it in that way, but um, we'll talk that about in a bit. All right, well, he's been our grid. He's been Osiris, and we'll catch you guys in a couple of days for the next one. Bye-bye. See you soon.